Welcome back to the channel. SUSE Linux, one of the oldest and most influential Linux distributions, has a story that reflects the broader history of Linux itself. To fully appreciate its significance, we must delve deep into its origins and development over the decades. In 1992, four college students from Germany, Roland Dyroff, Thomas Fair, Hubert Mantle, and Bertrand Steinbild, decided to start their own venture. Drawing inspiration from their exposure to Unix and a new kernel called Linux, they founded Gesellschaft for Software and System Entwickling MBH, S-U-S-E, meaning Software and System Development. The name also paid homage to Konrad Zuss, creator of the Z3, the first programmable and Turing complete computer. Initially, their work focused on localizing the soft landing Linux system, SLS, into German, addressing the need for non-English Linux systems. The internet was in its infancy, making localized distributions on floppy disks or CD-ROMs a necessity. Their business model revolved around selling physical media, which included their semi-localized versions of SLS and later Slackware. By 1994, SUSE had released its first Linux distribution based on Slackware, but enhanced with additional patches and German localization. Their efforts made Linux more accessible to non-English speakers and reduced the complexity of installation. This was no small feat during a time when downloading software required painstakingly slow internet connections and the process of creating installation media was prone to interruptions and errors. In 1995, Florian LaRoche joined the team, bringing with him Jurix, a distribution known for its innovative build system. This collaboration led to the creation of SUSE Linux version 4.2 in 1996. The release introduced YAST, yet another setup tool, a groundbreaking utility that simplified system configuration and installation. YAST became a hallmark of SUSE Linux, providing an intuitive interface that appealed to both novice and experienced users. As SUSE refined its offerings, it gained traction across Europe. By the late 1990s, the company's reputation for reliability and robust support positioned it as a leading choice for enterprise and academic institutions. The introduction of version 5 in 1997 marked a significant milestone as SUSE transitioned to using RPM packages, distancing itself from its Slackware roots. The company's ambitions extended beyond Europe. By 1998, SUSE had opened branch offices in Oakland, USA, and expanded its presence across the continent. Partnerships with major tech companies like IBM, SAP, and Oracle bolstered its credibility. SUSE also began offering pre-installed servers, showcasing its readiness for the enterprise market. A pivotal moment came in 2000 when SUSE collaborated with IBM to bring Linux to the S390 mainframe. This effort resulted in the creation of SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, SLES, which debuted in 2000. It was the first Linux distribution for IBM mainframes, showcasing SUSE's ability to meet the stringent requirements of enterprise environments. The collaboration not only demonstrated the flexibility of Linux, but also established SUSE as a major player in the enterprise space. In 2004, Novell acquired SUSE for $210 million, marking a turning point in the company's history. Under Novell's ownership, SUSE gained access to greater resources and expanded its reach globally. That same year, SUSE Linux 9.1 became the first version available for free as a single CD without support. This move democratized access to the distribution and introduced many users to the SUSE ecosystem. In 2005, Novell launched the OpenSUSE project, a community-driven initiative that provided a free, open version of SUSE Linux. Version 10.0 marked this shift, blending innovation and accessibility. The OpenSUSE build service, introduced around the same time, further empowered developers by enabling them to create and distribute software packages with ease. In 2006, Novell and Microsoft announced a controversial agreement aimed at improving interoperability between Linux and Windows systems. While the agreement drew criticism from parts of the open source community, it facilitated advances in compatibility such as enhanced support for Microsoft Office file formats and improved directory integration. This collaboration underscored SUSE's commitment to serving enterprise customers operating in mixed environments. After Novell's acquisition by Attachmate in 2011, SUSE became an independent business unit. This period saw a renewed focus on SUSE's core strengths, including enterprise solutions 
and innovative technologies. In 2014, Microfocus acquired Attachmate but allowed SUSE to operate autonomously, preserving its distinct identity. During these years, SUSE introduced OpenSUSE Leap and Tumbleweed. Leap provided a stable distribution closely aligned with SUSE Linux Enterprise, while Tumbleweed offered a rolling release model for cutting-edge software. These offerings catered to a diverse user base, from enterprise clients to Linux enthusiasts. In 2018, SUSE was acquired by EQT Partners, which enabled significant investments in emerging technologies like Kubernetes, cloud computing, and artificial intelligence. SUSE's public listing on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange in 2021 marked another milestone, valuing the company at $6.1 billion. Despite leadership changes, SUSE continued to innovate, focusing on areas like edge computing and containerization. SUSE's journey from a small German startup to a global leader in enterprise Linux is a testament to its resilience and adaptability. Its innovations, from YAST to the OpenSUSE project, have left an indelible mark on the Linux ecosystem. As technology evolves, SUSE's commitment to open source principles and enterprise-grade solutions ensures its continued relevance. Today, SUSE remains at the forefront of Linux innovation, balancing its enterprise focus with a dedication to fostering a vibrant open source community. Its dual offerings of Leap and Tumbleweed exemplify its ability to serve both stable and cutting edge needs, ensuring a bright future for the distribution and its users. Thanks for watching.